Now, I know before going to that, I know some individuals have been, in, you know, asking questions about how do I get rid of this illness? How do I get rid of that illness? As I said, it is so much more to the illness than just the physical manifestation of it. Sometimes that illness stems from um, karma that needs to be balanced. Sometimes but I call it the three aspects of yourself. It's, it's balanced from the soul, balanced from the mind, and balanced from the body. So keep that in the back of your mind as we journey together in trying to transform. Because remember, you're creating your reality. So what you don't want to do is react to something outside of you saying, well, I have this disease, and what mechanism or tools cannot uh, get rid of it or cure it. Right? There is no such thing as cure. There's only transformation. No matter what it is, is your body transforming, your mind transforming, or your or your soul shifting, you know, to another perspective of reality. So anybody would like to jump in and add to that? Or take hey, away from it. This is Jay. Can you hear me at all? I can hear you, Jay. How you doing? Amazing. I'm doing great, man. How are you? <laughs> I am blessed. Uh <laughs> What do you, what is some of you, what do we got to share? Share, share some of the wisdom. I know we had um, a conversation here previously. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily a uh, wisdom, but, um, you know, something that's been nagging at me for a while, which is just, you know, these allergies that I, that I have. Okay. Um, I had them since, you know, I was a super young kid, um, you know, like, even uh, pre-teens, you know, in in my ten below the ten, the tens, okay. And uh, now as an adult, what's strange is that uh, you know, you know, thirty forty years later, I'm getting these allergies all over again, and I've been asking, you know, what is it that you know I've not relieved of myself, or what have I not neutralized to uh, be able to um, you know be allergy free. Why do you want to be allergy free? I want to be well free, obviously, in order to move around physically without uh, any impediment impediments. Yeah. And what intention have you put to us being free of the allergy? Uh, with regards to intentions, obviously, you know, I I can uh, just you know go hiking just go walking around nature um and just enjoying life <laughs> yes i said did you understand my question sir I, I was just away there for a couple of minutes so the question i was asking jay with the allergy no matter what distortions you have or dis-ease you have ask yourself what intention have I put towards that dis-ease or that distortion? I mean, everybody's reflecting it. Everybody's dealing with some trials and tribulations and struggles. What are the intentions you put in there? What is that? What, what do I mean by that? On a day-to-day -day basis, what are your thoughts as it regards to that situation or that distortion? Is it constructive? Is it transformative? Or is it reactive and negative? Okay? Because that's what you feed yourself. Right, because ultimately our goal is to always try to get you to shift. There is no react reactiveness because remember in the physical world, but nothing really touches or impacts something else is the mind and the intention that recreates the reality that we desire. Right, so based on that, I have allergy. If I think about the next the last six months, or if I perceive the create, because that's what we do, we create into our mind, which I'm going to be going into depth here shortly. If I create in my mind, how am I creating in my mind about the allergy? Am I creating in my mind that I, it no longer serves me, which means that I'm experiencing the reality beyond the allergy? Or am I going into my mind describing the allergy and all of this impact on me and all the distortions of how it affects me? Jay, would you like to add to that? Yeah, I thank you for uh, rephrasing. I, I definitely understand. Um, I think I've been spending more time trying to uh, combat it, like fight against it, um, even using the cheat coils and whatnot to uh, try to prevent, uh, as opposed to putting the intention in there to 
uh, reinforce like what life would be like allergy free. Anybody else would like to add? Because that's something we're going to be working in depth with for the, na the next few months. We're going to be focused more on what are your intentions as it relates to the situation that you are dealing with? Because everybody is dealing with different problems and situations. Chi coil is an instrument. It's a tool. It's not a quick fix. If anybody have told you otherwise, they have misled you. Chi coil is an impactful tool that bridge the necessary intention that you need, right? So when you run the chi coil, you're running the intention that you normally don't give yourself or offer yourself. So when you run the health frequency, you are actually putting the information within your information field as it relates to the health, because normally you're not seeing the outcome. So we become codependent on the chi coil to do it. But at the end of the day, you still have to connect with that chi coil with a purpose. So we have to get beyond the chi coil. We have to get beyond the frequency. We have to get to the place where we understand what is the desired outcome that I'm looking for and where am I as it relates to that? So Jay, to answer your question as it relates to the allergy, start going beyond the allergy, start putting the intention with the chi coil beyond the allergy, find those frequencies that you say, you because you say, I want to do certain things beyond the allergies. Find the frequency that guides you to those things, right? If it's happiness, if it's joy, if, if it's family, if it's positivity, if it's abundance in financial success, put your intention on those things that you say the allergy, whatever the allergy is holding you back from, put your intention on the things beyond the allergy and then leverage the technology to be able to support that. That's right. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, I, I would actually like to say uh, Go ahead. How, you, how you have described that is, uh, is very straightforward. And um, I understand what you're saying. I, I, I practice that in life. It's nothing... It's not new to me, but it is. It's new to hear someone else come across with it. The intention is is the most important thing. Attitude is more important than fact. And uh, I understand what you're saying about having the intention to reach the goal and why you're doing it, and not be independent on an exter exterior uh, object or, or or whatever, such as uh, the. Uh, Two coils. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I'm actually really confirming what you what you're saying. Thank you, thank you. And I think that's where we get trapped within the idea of the what we call sometimes called the matrix or the physical construct of reality. And this and this requires practice. You know, we all have to practice daily. Remember, uh, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Creation is design with the spectrum of duality creation is not created on a singularity perspective like i don't create based on what i'm feeling i'm feeling happy so let me create happy thoughts and happy reality and happy things every time creation is created it creates duality right and that means that the positive and negative will exist in your life on some aspect right you're either going to perceive it or you know which is to see it or you're going to actually you know, conceive it, which means you're creating it, or you're going to it's gonna be, become part of you. So you have to ask yourself, do I want my creation outside of me as I reflect it? And it, what is the difference between what is I'm, what, is, what I'm experiencing versus what is outside of me? And that's where that intention to come in. Because if you're vibrating at a constructive positive level, then you can experience it, but you can perceive it. So you will see others. And the goal is to make sure you're not attached to that when others are experiencing it. And that's why sometimes we fall into that trap because once we connect to it with someone else, we become one with it. And now we go through that cycle again. So that's why sometimes we, we, we miss moving forward and we find ourselves always taking a couple of steps back. Question and other questions are concerned. Jay, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for your guidance. Yeah. So also one of the things, when we talk about the book, I, I wrote that book called um, the, the Spiritual Development Book that I wrote, Spiritual Journey for Everyone. One of the things about that book is the construct of the book is all about practice. What practicum cannot in, instill 
in myself that is unconscious. It is natural that I can follow. We're all going through a different journey. We're all leveraging the chi and leveraging all the aspects of different tools within our reality in order to transform and shift. So one of the things I wanted to do, the book, I wanted to continue the chapters of the book. Right? So chapter eight, chapter nine, chapter 10, I would like to tell your story within the book. So everybody, if you feel like you have a story you would like to share, I would like to incorporate that into a chapter because Kayao is going to become an adult in the next chapter and she is going to be interacting as we're interacting with one another. And now we are going to be able to share our, you know, our testimonials and our story. And so others can hear it and embody the perspective that I too can overcome that. Because I know we're all going through different, uh, different distortions or different opportunity of growth. And I wanted to make sure that all those different perspectives are heard and not just my perspective. So for example, if Jay says, um, Josie, I've gone through this journey. This has been a phenomenal experience. This, you know, this is what I've gone through. And I'm gonna say, let's let's construct a chapter in the book, and then we'll put the book, and then we'll share the audio file so others can have access to Jay because somebody might want Jay testimonials over mine. So it doesn't matter who's out there. If you have a story to be told, raise your hand or bring you on as a panelist. Let's get to know you. And so when the world, uh, when when the world is ready, because uh, synchronicity will kick in and you will be able to share those stories because your story is valid. I've experienced a lot of things. Um, one thing I can say, when we talk about chi core, we talk about energy technology, we're tapping into the creative force. That is where our creation, especially when we're talking about uh, wave technology. Wave technology is all about information field. It takes information and it puts it into your information field. Right? And you now resonate with that information. So what does that mean? If you're a sad person and you don't have happy people around you, you're stuck in that, in that what I call cult church. That C-U-L-T, that cult traps you in. It's an energetic cult, right? So you want to break free from that culture, but you're trapped because everybody around you seems to be negative because that's what you have gravitated for such a long time. So how do you go within? So uh, in the ancient days, we used to say the kingdom of heaven dwells within you and that that which is in you is greater than which is in the world. Sometimes you've heard it through spiritual or religious teaching, but that is actual fact. The elements within you, because you are a micro and a macro nature of your creation and the reality exists that exists around you. So that being said, if you go in, right, you can actually put the information around you by going in. And then the reality outside of you will respond. So that's why I need everybody to really focus on the, the impact of this technology. This technology relocates you and puts you in the environment that normally you would not have access to. I don't know if that makes sense. Anybody have anything to add to that thought? Or if there's any misunderstanding about that thought. So if you have what is called bad luck in your life, I've had bad luck. Right? I've been cursed with bad luck. It's a generation of curse. Well, that is not always true anymore. You take the chi coil, you run the luck frequency, and you saturate your information field with it, and you'll begin to change your vibration. Because that's all changes. Change your vibration, change your reality. Change your vibration, not only change your reality, you change the resonance, right? That is the signal you put out to reflect back to you. And if you change that, the reality changes. I don't care what situation you have, it will change. But what is going to happen, you're going to see some ups and downs because everything you have done so far has to be, has to fade out. And then sometimes when creation happens, you have to be tested in order to be trusted. That is the next reality you want because you have spent so much time in this saturated frequency of vibration that when you try to go somewhere else, that frequency that you've been experiencing or that vibration you've been experiencing loves you. It has intention, it has a purpose, it has a, re it's, it's, it's actually part of reality, part of creation itself. So it loves you so much, it wants you to be negative, right? It's like, where are you going? <laughs> I love you, stay with me, right? <laughs> so you're like, no, 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 I'm gonna have to let you go. I appreciate you all the time we spend together, but I think it's time for me to go. I'm tired of being broke, busted and disgusted. 
I'm tired of being sickly. I appreciate all the sickness you have given me and, and just be in gratitude and smile about it because you can let it go. You can detach from it. There's no judgment in it because now you're saying, I don't want to experience you. I want to perceive you outside of me. And now I take this technology and I begin to apply it and, and saturate myself with it and begin to move into a different direction than what I'm usually accustomed to. So someone have a quick question. And Frank uh, has a question. Can you tell me more about how not to be attached to the outcome, but rather be part of the growth by helping ourselves and possibly others? Frank, do you mind if I add you? Okay, so let me read Frank's question again. Can you tell me more about how not to be attached to the outcome, but rather be part of the growth by helping ourselves and possibly others with the right intention? Can you tell me more about where we should be at be at when working with cheek oil and base our intention on the outcome only? So that's a that's a loaded question. So let me break it down a little bit. So can you tell me more about how not to be attached to outcomes. Outcomes are your intentions, okay? So for example, when you look at outcome and you attach to it, based on where you are on your definition of that outcome can have other attachments to it. Let me give you an example, okay? I want to be wealthy. I want to be successful. Let's say anybody out there. This is not, you know, I'm not claiming that, but I just said somebody out there say, I want to be wealthy. I want to, I want to have enough money to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Right. The reason you need to let it go because uh the creation has to be creative in the manifestational process because you can't control all the variables that's going to come into play to allow that to happen. That's the first thing. So you need to detach from it so allow creation to bring it to you the way creation feels is best for you, right? Because sometimes you might want something in a specific way, but those attachments can be you know, counterintuitive. Right? And so when you think of money in this moment, right? And so you say, I want to be wealthy, right? And when you think of money in this moment, you also think you're thinking of debt obligations with that money, right? Because that's what you're being stuck in. You're being stuck in that debt and money, debt and money, debt and money, and those kind of things. So that duality exists and you attach to those definitions. So when you attach to those definitions, even when you begin to see manifestation of some aspect of elevation in your financial situation, those debt obligations will increase proportionally. So debt obligation because that's your belief system but when you detach from it and the and the universe or the divine or the creative force brings it to you it doesn't bring the attachment to it it brings it to you in a unique way so that's why the attachment is so critical because as long as you attach to it you are still attaching those definitions of the belief system and you're saying that i no longer want to believe in poverty or, or lack right but you're experiencing lack so the goal is to let it go and says i perceive this to be true for me when it happens, it will, which I know it will happen, but I'm gonna give the universe a, a creative means to be able to bring that reality. And a lot of times, the reason we practice love and compassion, because creation brings those tools and those stepping stones of manifestations through people, places, and things that you at least expect, <laughs> right? And so, so for somebody who might be out there and says, I don't like these group of people. I don't like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like women. I don't like men. I don't like these group. I don't like that group. What you do, you block the opportunity because things will flow naturally when you become loving and become compassionate because love intertwines into everything. That's what we've been talking about, love. When love intertwines into everything, now you say, I understand the nature of love. Love has this intention of, goodwill, compassion, positivity, even though sometimes it's subjective. When you do that, you open yourself to more aspect of creation and then manifestation happen faster. But if you tunnel vision yourself to believe in how you're going to achieve, then you lock yourself. So let's look at health. I want to be healthy. I have a chronic disease. I've been sent home to say I have six months to live and I have a year to live, that is an opportunity. Because 
if you believe the doctor, let's say if it's cancer, for example, the oncologist is the only specialist in all of creation that can tell you how to heal you, you, you are now stuck, right? Because you're looking for a particular person to give you the answer. But when you open yourself, sometimes a child can come to you with the answer, right? You can visit someone's home and you can say, I'm a vegan and I don't eat certain things, or I'm on this diet, I don't eat certain things, based on all the belief system or all the different practices, you may need to go somewhere and eat something that you are not familiar with that is necessary for your transformation, but because you have those judgments, it restricts you. So we want to start learning to let go of all the judgments. The judgment, because everybody, everything out there is a reflection of you. Yes, I'm saying I'm a reflection of you. If the variables changes slightly, I look just like, like you. We are all vibration, all vibrating at a different level. So nothing outside of you is any different than you than just another perspective. Keep that in your mind. That's why you want to make sure if creation is out there that you've already created and you want your creation to give you the best version of life that you want to perceive, then you have to be open to love in all aspects of your creation. That means loving everybody, everything to the best of your ability. And if you struggle with that, go to the chi or saturate yourself with love so you can embody unconditional love. Because unconditional love begins with you inside of you and overflows to you to your creative force or your creative processes. Can you tell me more about where we should be at when we're working with the chi It doesn't matter where you are. Okay? You can be anywhere. Um, you can have your, if you have the mobile chi core, if you, if you have the aura core, a lot of times you're stationed, but you can take your chi core anywhere. Um, just be in the right head space when you're running certain frequency, right? Uh, I keep sharing this. Do not run abundance if you're not experiencing the reality that you want abundant of, okay? If you run abundant and you are, your thought pattern is sickly, you're going to manifest more abundant of that. If you have a distortion that you have defined because you say, I have this, I am this. You are now solidified those definitions in you. Please do not run abundance till you have a way to neutralize those, uh, those frequencies in your body. And that's where you want to go and start running those love, start running those other uh, opportunity to neutralize as calm, there's balance, there's different things I want you to run before you go ahead and start running those abundance. So please be careful with that because a lot of people are will end up putting more on themselves than they can handle. Now, also, one of the things I was sharing with another gentleman, he was having physical distortion. He said, I've been to the doctors. The doctors have examined me and they can't find nothing. Okay. And I share with him sometimes that's expansion. The more you begin to tap into energy, the more you be, you'll become expanded, right? Because you're experiencing duality. So I need everybody to visualize this. When you go outside, let's say you take your laptop, right? And you go outside your home and you sit outside your home, wherever you are, and you go into the laptop to find you, okay? That's what it means to go and find you within. This is an allegory, analogy, whatever you want to call it, right? You go in and you say, there I am, and you zoom on top of you and you find you, okay? Now you found your center, your beginning point. Right. When you begin to tap into energy, you begin to expand. So when you zoom out, you no longer just you no longer seeing just you. You see everything else around you from a higher perspective. That's what is called the higher self. The higher self is not connected to just you. The higher self just don't know you and know everything around you equally. So you are an expression of energy as the chair, as the, the animals, as the creature, the bug, the plants, everything, it knows everything on an intimate level. So when you zoom out, make sure you understand that it takes certain level of energy because now you become connected to people, places, and things that you have expanded. So you will begin to manifest physical distortions, right? Sometimes it's headaches, sometimes it's cold-like symptoms like flu-like symptoms. So a lot of those things will start to happen. So when you do go to the hospital and the doctor says, I cannot find nothing, take a breath, except there is nothing. 
and then continue to work with yourself and expand. That too would dissipate because as you expand, you become um, more in the line. So for me, when I was expanding, I was having uh, like almost like aneurysm symptoms. My blood pressure around two, I think like 215 to 205. And the doctor said they couldn't find nothing that was wrong. And it was intense because I wanted more of source energy in this physical body. I wanted to expand my perspective. And so there was a lot of things that was happening to me at that time. I could heal people by touch, right? People could heal themselves by touching me, but it was also draining. And then I was taking on people's energy in a way. So when I expanded myself, I became in tune with people, places and things. And that's heavy at times, especially if the people that you are, allow permission to be in your circle, when they're locked in with you, you carry that load and that load can be heavy, right? And so you feel like sometimes you're drained, you feel like you're tired, and then sometimes you project it outward as far as judgment towards others. It's not them, it's the expansion within you to connect. And, and lastly, when you're not, not just the, the manifestation of the symptoms, but even the thought patterns, you're sitting at home and all, all of a sudden you have these distorted thoughts, all right? negative thoughts. It's not you. I need you to understand it's not you. It's the connection that you have with people, places, and things. You're so in tune, you become sensitive to the thought pattern of those individuals. So be careful uh, how you're in tune with others and also learn to practice to neutralize yourself. Again, if you have difficulty doing it, go back to the cheek coil and find those frequencies that can help neutralize you. You want to be equanimous. You want to, you want to move like the flow of a river without attachments to what is on the shore of the river when you are flowing within higher energy. Okay. So again, it doesn't matter where you are, just find your center and focus on your intention and the after effect of what that intention is going to manifest. And then trust your creative process. Sometimes people will say trust God, but trust your creative process. Um, let me add this uh, from a religious uh, context. In the ancient time, around uh, in, 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 a, in a, Lemuria was a civilization that existed. It was a, it was a place, right? And during the time of Lemuria, we had different practice. Now I was there, I was a, I've identified myself as a priest, right? And a lot of things that we practiced then was, was a lot of spiritual connection and understanding. Uh, around that time, Atlantis existed as well. So Atlantis was more, less rely on the technological advancement while leveraging energy field, the energy work and different things like that, uh, crystals and all those different things. But in those times, it was the core nature of oneself and understanding spiritual awareness, spiritual reality. Now, and when when I recognized, I know the, the experience back then, I'm just going to digress. I recognized the experience back then. I realized back then it's also happening right now. It's just a shift that I'm having this, ex this subjective experience because I'm having both experience at the same time. Uh, there is no past and present. All is happening at the same time, but we create the illusion about a shift. And so going back then, one of the things about, you know, we talk about distortions and energy and, and all these different things that's, that's happening. The mind was the canvas by which we tap into back then to paint the reality we wanted. We were intentional about it. We create the intention. We put the intention forward. And we allow that intention to manifest. And what was amazing is to see the creative way it manifested, who it manifested through. That was what was exciting back then. You know, you say, I want to be healthy. You sit back and says, how was this going to happen? And just marvel how it happened. You know, and then sometimes it will be you visiting um, someone and you have dinner with someone. And then all of a sudden that person prepare a meal and all of a sudden that meal creates the, the transformation that your body needed in that time. So allowing yourself to be free and be expansive and be out there. So going back to the thought about all these different physical manifestation in your expansion, be open to it, but stay neutral. Right? Stay neutral and become the observer as you expand further. You know, 
don't react to it because that too will pass, right? And then whatever you feel like I can't really reach it, then resharpen yourself with the cheek oil. And, and, and here's the thing, I'm here supporting cheek oil, but I, and I support whatever it is that's best for you. For me, that is more important. What is best for you? If you feel like the cheek oil, the cheek oil frequency is best for you, maximize that. If you feel like something else, don't throw it away, grow. You may tap into the cheek oil and work in conjunction with that technology and see that you can elevate yourself on different levels, right? But use this as only a tool to bring the best version of yourself forward, right? Let me see if I have another question. Maybe, okay, technical question, maybe you can answer later on the on the show. Is the same cheek call with a radius of two feet good enough to work throughout the body? Uh, yes, to answer your question, yes. If the cheek call is impacting you, right? Uh, whether it's two feet or six feet, a lot of times when we look at the mini core, I, take, I tell everyone, anyone, take the mini core and sit it on top of your body. So that way you begin with your body. Because remember when I talk about that zooming, you will learn to zoom in, in a specific area that is you. Use the chi core to help you expand out. Okay, And the manifestation will take place as you expand out. So yes, the two feet, um, six feet, 25 feet, it doesn't matter. Because all you're doing is putting the information into your information field. Now, let me digress again. What is the information field? It's all aspect of creation. Every aspect of the universe is within your information field. Every aspect of creation is within your information field. It's how you expand your subjective perspective within that information field but you are within that information field. So a lot of time when we talk about the heart chakra, we talk about love. Heart the heart chakra projects out further than most other chakras, right? The energy field is more expansive. So love frequency is more expansive because it's integrated into every aspect of the, the, the nature of creation, right? So expand yourself, allow the technology to help you expand, 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 because all of it is part of within your, your creative force, your creative body, right? There's several different layers. There's a mental body, physical body, spiritual body, as you want to label them, um, etheric body. So there's so many different layers to you. There's infinite layers, and all those layers have a different perspective to experience. I know I've been babbling a lot, but I want I want to stop. I want I want some questions. I want this again. This I want this to be us. Um, I don't want to feel like I'm just talking to you guys because I know you have you guys have something to contribute. Who would like to jump in and add or take away? This is the Q and A time, you know. So to answer your question, Frank, I know you asked a technical question. Yes, um, leverage the cheek coil. Uh, and once as you have closest to you, just put it on your body. If you have it a little further out, put it next to your bed. If you have the oral coil, I would say keep it close by and just saturate the areas that you are trying to put within your information field so your subjective perspective can start to become more expansive. Jay, do you have any other question? I don't have any question per se, but I just want to touch upon what you were mentioning about picking up on energies from other people, you know, because yeah. when I was in my teens and in my 20s, um, I didn't know why. But every time I walked into a mall, I would always feel drained. And um, eventually that took a toll on me because a lot of the uh, negative thought patterns would get into me. And I thought very negatively about the world. Up until the point where, you know, into my 20s and 30s, it, it took a, a heck of a lot of effort <laughs> to reverse engineer, <laughs> to uh, start to eat healthy and then and eventually think healthy and emote healthy. But yeah, it was just one of those uh, processes that uh, I apparently needed to go through uh, in this particular journey to discover myself. Let's, let's discuss, you know, type in any questions about, let's talk about specifically for health and wellness. If you guys wanna do that, what type of distortions you have and then see how we can support that, what type of frequency. 
I would try to see what information you need to put in your information field. Uh, so if anybody have any distortions they would like to share. So as we go through this journey, there are, go ahead, Mr. Thompson. You got a question? Yeah, uh, not really. I actually just want to confirm what you're uh, expressed. Uh, I, I'm on my 85th journey around the sun. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. And I've uh, I've lived in many countries. I had the privilege of living with many different races, religions, traditions, and customs. And uh, I've been on the journey to find truth for a long time. But uh, truth is truth. Uh, re regardless of what uh, human language word that we use it for, and um, whether it comes from an individual or it comes from uh, people who are like yourself, become very knowledgeable and able to express it and get it out there to, uh, to the public. So what you've actually said is uh, a lot of it I have experienced. So I'm just acknowledging uh, to everybody who's listening that uh, this is a truth. And uh, I think we've reached a phrase, uh, a level in, in our, uh, on this planet at the moment when more and more of the truth is coming out because this, this planet has been controlled primarily by fear and lies and truth has been forbidden but now it seems to be coming out and breaking out left, right, and center. And uh, as people like yourself who get up there publicly and speak about it, and uh, it's like uh, throwing a, a pebble into the ocean when the ocean is flat, it does make a difference. So I just want to acknowledge that. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. So I wanted to just add upon what uh, Thomas just talked about. Desmond, Desmond. Uh, Desmond, okay. Yeah. So Desmond talked about, you know, this, the distortions. I always call things distortions. When you think of distortions, when you look at, when you're watching TV, you get the frequencies, the interference, and you get that distortion, right? Reality is about distortions. So we animated into physical reality, most of us on, on, on this call and most of us on the planet Earth, we animate a physical reality so we can perceive what it means to experience a disconnect from that which we are okay and it's like going down the rabbit hole and some somehow as we dug deeper into the rabbit hole we lost our identity right we begin to identify ourselves as the digger those who are digging and the person who was in the darkness right that is now who you are just like you're in the ground digging you're also above the ground perceiving you digging as well you as above, as below, you as within, as you outward, you know, manifesting. That being said, there is, and, and that's something I was on a journey for a long time. There is no reality to fix. And that's why I get excited. Every time I get excited about the chi core, because you may not understand, it is the great equalizer. This technology and other energy technology is the great equalizer. And I need you guys to really gravitate to that idea, right? For a long time, we have been codependent on others to present information, right? And they give us the information, not only give us the information, they give us information in, in multiple different ways, whether it's monetary information, whether it's just wisdom or whether it's food or whatever, that's all part of information. And we have been stuck waiting for someone to give us the information when the information is within us and always has been within us, right? We have shifted on this planet into an information field, an information age, as some put it, right? So that means information is available to you anytime you're ready for it. You have to ask yourself, why do I need the information and for what purpose do I need the information, right? Because all the information is with you. So you're going in and you're pulling the information specific. Now we are, we are sometimes subjective based on personal needs, personal you know, desires and different things like that. But then also there's the expansion of that information outside when we look at the world. 
I need you guys to understand collectively, we can fix the world within ourselves. We don't need to go out there. You do not need the president to fix the country. You do not need politicians to fix the country. Stop believing that. You don't need someone on the platform to tell you to have a relationship on a spiritual level with yourself because you have to go through yourself to get to the kingdom. And the kingdom is still a part of you. It is you, right? The kingdom cannot exist without you because you're part of creation. Everything everybody's seeing is just a puzzle to the pieces that is within you. Stop looking outside of you and being lost. Look within you, follow, follow your inner compass. And when you feel lost, what tool can you go to? You can go to a tool that present information in a specific targeted way, right? And that's what this technology is all about. I want, so let's get past all the, I need to fix this, I need to fix that. I need a holistic uh, approach to transformation within my information field, yeah? I can now target. If I want a better world, I run the frequency to see a better world because we're looking at the outcome. You cannot be healthy. You cannot be successful. You can't be all those things because at some level, guys, and, and I'm saying it to all the wealthy folks out there, that thing is all about chasing their dollars. Been there done that when i talk about shifting i've shifted to a reality where i was treated like a god okay i was a pharaoh i walked upon man's back gold everything in the room was made of gold but there was no value to it so all the things that we chase has no value so when we chase something aggressively and we get lost within it you have to come back in again to find yourself out of it as Christian, if you get lost in it, you spend 60 years, 70 years pushing something and you get lost in it and you deanimate out of physical reality, you must come back in within it. So what does that mean? Let's say a successful individual like Bill Gates. Okay, This is not me saying anything against Bill Gates. If you know Bill Gates, hey, Bill, you know, hope you have a good life, right? I, I, I have no judgment to us. He's a manifestation of expressions of myself, right? So you have Bill, he out there, and that expression is pushing this idea of success means control, power, and wealth, right? There's nothing wrong with that, right? But what ends up happening when Bill leaves, if he hasn't balanced himself, he comes back as the grandchildren or the children of the individual that suffer under his success. And that's what that loop. And then what happens when you come back, you have this desire in you like you feel that I don't belong in poverty because you're still resonating, but now you have to evolve from it. And you work really hard. You spend all your life working really hard. You get to the top again and you lose your identity. You get lost in it again. And you're constantly going into that loop. We need to break the loop. You need to embrace balance. You need to understand that's what empathy, compassion, and love and positivity is so, so important. If you have that level of success, the goal is now to elevate aspects of your creation to that level of success. If you're healthy, you want to elevate others around you to be healthy. And that's why your testimonials and your experiences are so critical. And if you're wealthy, like the top 10 individuals can heal so much distortions around the world, but they're stuck in the chase. And that chase is going to be flipped. And once I realized that, I stopped the chase because we come in and it's fun to come in, but it's not fun while you're in. And so while you're in, leverage this tool constructively to make sure you have clarity of thought, you can control to your you can control your perspective to your higher self and to yourself and create that balance. Healing can happen like this. I've seen miracles with frequency technology. Some people put the information in the information field, they attach the emotion to it, manifestation happen almost instantaneously. There are other people who put the information in the information field, but they have contradictions to the information, right? They're, 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 they have a belief system they don't want to let go of. They have ideas they don't want to let go of, so they're stuck in that trap. Learn to neutralize. Zero yourself out on what you think should happen 
and just focus on the things that you desire to happen and let the rest go and be open to receiving it from anyone, anything, or anywhere. Yeah, that's why you must love nature. That's why you must love people, places, and things because you never know where your your creation is going to manifest from within. Yeah. So for distortion, I want to share this wisdom with everybody out there. So this is a nugget I would like you guys to take into consideration as you're trying to transform. We all have different belief system. There is no judgment in that. Some of you get this chi coil and you run the frequency and you say, well, I don't see it. So let me give you a point of connection, something to connect you with and then leverage the chi coil. Chi coil puts information in the information field. It is vibration. Uh, it impacts your vibration. It impacts your vibration in a way to allow you to manifest that which you are in abundance or that which you are more of. But you also have to understand, leverage the technology to let go of distortions that keeps you from what you're doing and whatever it is. So for health and wellness, I need everybody to write this down. If you're looking to work from the outside to the inside, right? And then work from the inside, which is what the chief one does, to the outside. This is what you should do, okay? Majority of doctor's visits to the hospital has to do with three major elements. Toxicity, heavy metals, and stress. Need all about it. Majority of doctor's visit, toxicity, heavy metals, and stress. I don't care how reactive you are. If you don't address those three things at the fundamental level, healing is not going to take place. Okay? Toxicity, you have all these different things out there. So what I did, I looked at all those elements and see how do I heal from the outside in. I looked at several different elements that some people are used to popping pills, taking vitamins, taking supplements. That is a programming. So let me give you something. As you're working inward, you're also working outward. Right. Zeolite, I want everybody to write this down. Zeolite is a detoxifier. I need everybody to explore the idea of zeolite in your health. Look up Z E O L I T E. Write it down. Get some zeolite in your life. I have a gentleman that he got on the zeolite. He said, Why? I can't stay awake. I said, Because your body needs to heal and remove the heavy metal. So zeolite removes heavy metals out of the body safely with no adverse effect. But it also alkalizes the blood. You don't need uh, um, to drink water that is alkaline because it, it is not where it's supposed to go. Your alkalinity needs to be in your blood. That's why some of like eating green foods, you, you, you guys can do your own research on that, right? So zeolite naturally, holistically remove the heavy metals. Now, what are heavy metals? Heavy metals are, are elements that drug companies, food company, capsulate things in, in order to allow it to have either longer shelf life or have the ability to go within the body without the body ripping it apart and destroying it. So it's a shield, right? And that shield goes in and the body doesn't know what to do with it. So the body tends to store in two major places, the bones, the brains. It, it goes into the worst place that you need it to be. And that's why we have all these mental distortion, Alzheimer's, all these things, because we're, pour, we're pouring a lot of things into the brain, right? All these elements are going to the head area. Okay? So you need to start to detoxify. You can also use spirulina and chlorella. Um, spirulina and chlorella combined also do have the same effect, but not as effective as zeolite. So that's working outward. Get your light and detoxify the heavy metals. Then what end up happening, your cells that receive signals will begin to communicate effectively. See, when you work with, with information field, you go into the programming. When you work with the cells, you're dealing with the program, right? So you're dealing with the programmer at the, at the, at the level, which is the creative level when you're doing wave. But when you come to the program itself, you have to affect the program in a different way, okay? And so cells receive signals, electro, elect, electricity or electrical signals, right? And so it's sending signal. It doesn't understand food. It just takes the food and transmit the food into information 
and understand information within the food. And a lot of time, the, the, the vibration of that food as it broke down into your body is kept based on the elements of how the food was designed. So information cannot be destroyed, cannot be created, it transforms. So when the cells takes that information in, everything that was within it, in the creation of it, and everything is still part of it. You absorb that into you. Right? So now when you take the zeolite and you get rid of those heavy metals, those cells now becomes free to communicate. Okay. So let me give you a distortion that we experience called cancer. Okay. Cancer, and, and, I, and I challenge anybody to talk to an oncologist, put them on, on alert. I said put them on alert because when you awaken to facts, you can ask qualifying questions. The geniuses of the world are five and six year olds. So I'm like a five and six year old when I'm asking questions. Talk to me like I'm five. Don't try to talk over me, right? Don't try to use fancy words. I've been in a room with some of the top oncologists and I looked them in the eye and said, tell me what is cancer. They use mutation. All is, it's a disease and all this. I said, what does that mean at the fundamental level of the body? Body is made up of atoms, cells, tissue. Give it to me at a fundamental level. And I said, we can't, I can't really do that, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, that's fair. So I said, well, how if, how would you like, or how, how may I present it to you as a five and six year old? And then you get to reflect back to me if I'm wrong. Right? And so I, they look at me and they always look at me with arrogance, right? And which is cool because I love, I love being down here looking up because at the end of nothing, no one is above me and no one's beneath me. I walk my life understanding that no one out here is above me and no one out here is beneath me. We are all expressions of the same creation, right? Which is the source, the one. So I said to him, I said, could cancer be simply the body inability to stop healing? And he paused and he said, that's oversimplifying it. No, I said, that is overstanding it. See, you try to understand it. I'm trying to overstand it so I can go beyond it. Okay? So to overstand cancer, I had to recognize that cancer is a self-perpetuating healing process and the cells that was necessary to communicate and says, stop healing are no longer there. And it has to do with toxicity. It has to do with heavy metals and it has to do with the stress in the body. So the question now was proposed to him, if this is, let's say it's an aspect of truth, not the truth, but an aspect of the truth. Will chemo and radiation therapy be the path of least resistant? Because are you not injuring the body further? See, these are constructive conversations you need to have with people so that way you are not putting them on a platform, putting yourself beneath them and just reacting to them. You're taking, you're taking active part in your creation. So when you go and grab that frequency device, the frequency will awaken you and enlighten you to start to expand understanding. You'll begin to understand more about yourself. You'll begin to realize what is right for you and what is wrong for you. Yeah. So... What I discovered with people and thousands of people have benefited from this, when they put zeolite in their body, remove the heavy metals, and they put spirulina and chlorilla, shiaga and other elements into their body, something amazing and magical happened. The body, the biome began to regenerate and cancer began to dissipate, right? You can go into remission, whatever you want to call it. And that's why there is no cure for it because it's nothing to cure. There's only bringing the body back to balance because we're working out here anywhere, right? So I need all of you to know out that you have the capacity to heal yourself. Healing begins and ends with you. Transformation begins and ends with you. Not, on, not a doctor, not a specialist. Doctors are tools and instrument to bridge it. As we talk about vibration and resonance, right? Resonance is the connection that says, Ah, everybody, look at you. Look over here. This is what I'm vibrating at. Come and see me, right? I'm vibrating with sickness. Oh, my God, I feel so sick. Oh, I'm sick like a dog. Come and show me how much more creative way I can be sick. And then all of a sudden, everybody around you coughing, sneezing, and farting on you, passing gas on you. You don't know why everybody and their mama around you just making you sicker because you're putting out there that you want to experience more of that because you're putting your emotion and everything out there. 
But when you become balanced and you become centered, you say, what are the tools out there? Because now I'm open to all possibilities without judgment. I do not judge chemo and radiation, right? That's a distortion, right? I do not judge you know, naturopathic means because that's also a distortion. Because those distortions are what one chooses to heal. If you choose chemo and radiation and you put in your body and you feel like, this is going to work for me. You have the power to allow it to work for you because everything is frequency at the end is how you transmit it into your body. But if you are stuck out here, listen to me carefully. If you're not in tune with your inner self and you're stuck out here and you start doing things out here that you have not really become aware of, you can help, you can, you can hurt yourself and become self-destructive. So again, zeolite, Spirulina, spirulina chlorella. Yeah. Now, what was interesting, when I began to look out here and I began to allow people to connect with that and the frequency device, they accelerated the healing process in their body faster. Um, and those fundamental elements, they didn't just get rid of can cancer. When I say it didn't cure, I always say it didn't balance just cancer, it was balancing other diseases in the body like AIDS and hepatitis, all these so-called incurable diseases, right? reason these diseases are incurable is because nothing out here that you're going to respond to is responsible for your transformation. Your healing begins and ends with you. So when people say it's, there's no cure, they're right on some level. But when you recognize, well, I'm the beginning, I'm the end as it relates to my health and wellness and what I choose to accept, it begins with the mind. The mind is where creation exists. What I put into my mind about this aspect of my reality would determine the efficacy of the success of it. So I want you guys to keep that. So that element, keep it in your regimen, right? With the cheek oil, remove those heavy metals out of your body so your body can start becoming balanced. Support your biome, your immune system, run the frequency. So also the cheek oil have those frequencies. So you can work inward and you can work outward, right? Of course, make sure you follow the instruction. This is not me trying to sell a product. This is me only giving you a tool. This is only a tool I'm presenting. And as an academic director for Chico, my job is to always be objective. I'm not here to sell anybody's product or sell any tool. I'm not even here to sell the Chico. I'm here to educate you and give you the path of least resistance that you, I believe will help support your transformation and empower you. You, you, you is always going to be my focus, not anyone else. I don't make a dime talking to you guys, and that is not my interest. What I want is to empower you so you can become the light, so you can project. So when I look out into my creation, I'm having the best manifestation of reality that best serves me and serves us all, right? So I'm operating through a place of love and compassion, right? So again, zeolite is Z-E-O-L-I-T-E. -E. Get that into your diet. Get spirulina and chlorella into your diet. And there's some other elements. And then run run those balanced frequency, guys. I need you to neutralize you. The whole purpose. So I was meditating and I shifted and I met Guatemala, right? And he and I was having a dialogue. Most of you may not know, we call him the Buddha and all these different titles. And he is a creative storyteller. And we're sitting there, and he has all these animating ways to tell story. And we're talking, we're interacting. And it's just like I'm interacting with you. And one of the things, he shared with me is that the more he chased out here to solve the problem of suffering, the more he was perceiving suffering within himself. So there was no end. It was almost eternal, right? So when I asked him, I said, well, how did you become enlightened? He said, I realized there was nothing to chase except myself. I was chasing myself. Now, I try to imagine me chasing myself, right? So imagine you standing up, and start running forward to chase yourself. You will never catch yourself. It's forever. And so as we have that dialogue, the goal is not to chase yourself. The, the goal is to center yourself and understand when you center yourself that people, places, and things are expressions for you, about you, to develop you, to enhance you, to do all that thing for you. And so all the suffering that he was talking about curing, he started inflicting it in himself. 
from eating a grain of rice to doing all these other distortions. He, he wanted to embody it. But then when he realized it wasn't necessary because it didn't bring spiritual connection. It brought disconnection, right? And when he finally got the light, just be, just be now, yeah? Last thoughts. And now I'm, we're going to end the session, but I want I want everybody to understand why your past does not define your next step. The past is a figment of everybody's imagination. Okay, so I'm going to ask. So, Mr. Desmond, I'm going to ask you a question. You ready? Well, yeah. All of your 86 wisdom. I know you have an answer because I'm been I'm been waiting for someone to answer this question. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Okay. What came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> as you reflect back what came first uh, I, well in my case it was a question of I begin uh, I remember an incident happened in the church in church when I was eight years old mm -hmm. and I was looking out at this uh congregation and I thought there's something very wrong with all this <laughs> and that that had a great impact on, on me okay. I won't go into the details why but uh, what I perceived uh, and also there was certain annoyness knowing what was what actually was true and what was false but that's well, you created that Mr. Desmond you created all of that so you got to ask yourself why you created that rather than saying something happened to you. It happened for you because you created it. And I know that's tough because without oh, it, you wouldn't be able to well, work. yeah, that's, that's another, that's, yeah. Okay. So yeah. The, the, when I was going with that, with the chicken and the egg, right? Okay. Yeah. When we look in the past to solve problems, we are lost because in the past, we're still creating we're still creating from the now. So when I said what came first, you can say, well, the chicken, but there's something that had to come before the chicken, the egg, well, something had to come before the egg. So you go into a loop, stop going into a loop behind. But let me ask this question. If I have a chicken, what must come next? The egg, because what comes next is what I have control over. See, and I need all of you to recognize that. What is next for you is more relevant than what happened to you or what you perceive or create that. Oh happens. yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm right so, there, hundred percent. So your next step is what leads you to your next level of success. Mm. So everybody out there, you take a deep breath and says, "I don't care about my past creation, what I perceive as past thoughts, because they're not real. This is present creation." on or uh, within my mind within that platform and if i create enough of it in that platform in my mind i'm going to manifest aspect of it outside of me so let me stop going in and perceiving me sick and let me start creating within me what i need to see outside of me because that's your next step so the chicken and the egg is an analogy because i can tell you what is coming next if i have an egg a chicken must come next well, someone told me if I have a chicken, what is next? He said chicken nuggets. And I thought it was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> I, I almost wanted to say roast chicken. <laughs> there you go. So they're like, I'm going to put it into that story really quick. I'm not going forward. We're going we'll to make it a nugget and we end the chapter right there. Right. But if the things perpetuate, like you're going to always perpetuate eternally, what comes next? So when you leave this session with me, ask yourself, what is next for me that I desire and how can I go inside and prepare for it? So when the negative thoughts come in, ask yourself, is this preparation for what is next? If the answer is no, turn on your chi coil to counter that. If you're angry, go to your chi coil and run balance frequency from that. If you feel sad and frustrated, run the love frequency. In fact, I would say the love is universal. Go to and find those love frequency and just permeate through your body. So that way you can neutralize your creation 
that doesn't serve what is next that you desire. Okay? So I would like to end on that note. This is the homework for all of us. If you're out there in the world and aware and share this wealth with others, always look them in the eyes when wives, children, grandchildren come to you and say, I have this problem. You stop them and you say, what is next? Or what do you want next? Let's focus on that. I want to be healthy. Then let's not talk about what caused the problem. Let's not talk about how sad and sick you are. Let's talk about how you feel or how you can perceive yourself feeling better. Yeah. And what is next will lead you to your next level of success. Do you would like to add anything, Mr. Desmond, before we... I know, Jay, would you like to jump in and add anything before we well, shut uh, it down? I, I, I must say, the most important of all is to be in present time, to be, to be in the now so that you're able to create. I don't harp on the past. It's, it's just an experience which is in the past. But the most important thing is to be creative and realize... This, this moment is a time that you can really be creative. And, uh, and uh, also, you mentioned right in the beginning, the intent, your intention. And that's, that's so, so important, the intent. And when you, people understand the concept of that and the power of that, it, uh, a lot of problems just simply disappear. They no longer exist. Exactly. But thank you. Thank you for the session. Fantastic. It also thank reminds you. me of stuff and you know, it polished me up a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate it. We are here sharpening with iron, sharpening iron. So thank you. Jay, would you like to say something? Yeah, thank you uh, for polishing me up as well. I just wanted to um, piggyback off of what Desmond was saying about using uh, the creative faculties. <clears throat> um, and in that sense, um, if we, you know, want to perceive things like the past and the future, well, even with me bringing up the allergies in the very beginning of the session, like I still had that inclination to jump back into my past, whether it's, you know, uh, biological genetics or even past lives and whatnot to try to suss out, so to speak, the, uh, the cause of my allergies. Um, but, you know, like you said, you know, as we're closing, you're talking about, you know, what's the next step? Well, using my creative abilities, I could even imagine a quote unquote future self where, you know, I'm already allergy free and I have all the, um, you know, physiological capacity to just heal myself at an instant. And if I stay focused and keep my intention on that, regardless of what was done in a quote unquote past or in a parallel timeline or whatever have you. Um, if I, if I'm able to stay focused on that and uh, if need be the cheat codes could help facilitate by all means, like that would be my key to success right there. So um, yeah, thank you Desmond for bringing up the creativity aspect and uh, Josie, thank you so much for uh, polishing me up as well. <laughs> You're most welcome. Again, iron sharpening iron. Creativity is your birthright. Use that yeah. for your development. You yeah, for your that's right. Development, your mental, your physical, your spiritual. They say divergent thinking is what it's called within academia. And the difference between convergent thinking and divergent thinking, which is an expansive way of thinking, is simply creativity. Your ability to see creative ways to look at the outcome. So when I said earlier about the cancer, that was my creative expression. Cancer is a healing process. But see, it's easy for me to cope with that, then cancer is a death sentence. It's easy to cope from that, then cancer is gonna harm me. Because cancer is a healing process. Well, I know I naturally do healing in my body. I just needed to stop healing. So now I can work with that rather than working with something outside of me that I don't long have control over. So I love you guys. And for those out there that I was trying to connect with you, when I shipped the technology and no longer give me access to, to the host ability. So I do apologize, but when we meet again, I will be ready. I will be prepared a little bit more Lex. So the, the transition was a little bit longer, but I will be prepared next time we do better. But again, it worked out because it was necessary. 
So I love each and every one of you. Go out there and be the best creative you can be and take responsibility for your creation. If it happens to you, it is your fault. Remember that. Accept it because as long as somebody else's fault, you're out of control and you will never have control if you blame others. Much love to all of you. Stay, stay the course and let's continue to support one another and be amazing and be, let's, let's, let's be better. Let's be better today than we were yesterday and better tomorrow than we are today. Yeah, yes. Great. Love you guys and let's pass on this legacy. I love you guys. You guys were amazing. Thank you guys again. My heart is with you guys always. Bye-bye.